Hello, welcome back to the homestead. So, I ate an apple this morning. It was a pink lady, which is my new favorite apple. So I had, I have been lately saving all the seeds I get from my apples and putting them in storage to sprout. And so I was gonna do this one because I do like the, the pink ladies and I thought maybe a hybrid from a pink lady would be cool to have. And then, pretty much gone about my day. The core has just been sitting on the table all day. I took a nap and then I went back to get the seeds finally because it was just sitting on the table and it was kind of in the way. And literally every single one of the seeds is sprouted. There's seven of them in total and they have longer roots than most of the... Lily, I'm sorry. And they have longer roots than most of the um, ones that I've actually planted. So these have been sitting out all day. So I had them soaking in water because they were kind of starting to dry out. So I've soaked them in water and I have a six tray. I don't have a seven tray, unfortunately, or an eight tray. So I'm just going to do one in each and then one pod with two. And then since I pretty much have way too many apples now, I'm going to have to give some of these away if they all end up surviving. <laughs> so I actually had eight uh, apple seeds, which I'm sure you guys could see before I even planted them. But as we all know, I'm not good at math, so I miscounted. Um, so I have six in this tray, and then two, the twins are in this tray. And I don't... So apple seeds are not true to seed which means which is just a fancy way of saying that the whatever the mother was so these were a pink lady is not what you're going to get from the seed because apples are cross-pollinated with other apple trees different varieties so these could be a mix of anything just half pink lady and i don't know if every single seed will be different or if each if if all of the seeds have the same genetics and they're just twins of each other. So we could have eight clones of the same tree or uh, eight different trees. And this is way too many trees for me. So if they all live, we're going to give some away. <laughs> I'm painting my book box. Uh, I'm almost done with it. It looks like an ice cream carton. The full walkthrough on that thing is going to be on the website at lifeisnowinsession.com. So if you want to see all the details and stuff about what I even made it from, you can um, look on there. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, aside from that, I'm going to go hide these little rocks I have in the garden. Not really hide them, but I'm going to put them in there because they're cute. I've flex sealed them. Well. I didn't need, actually, I didn't use Flex Seal on these. I used polyurethane. I used Flex Seal on just about everything else, but I wanted to see how the polyurethane did. It stained them yellow, so Flex Seal's better. <laughs> um, I'm also just gonna do an overview of the garden, see if anything needs done, show you some changes I made last night that I didn't film because I didn't feel like it because it was the middle of the night. I went ahead and put the rocks in the poppy bed. You can't really see them. They're kind of a secret surprise for whoever decides to pick the poppies. All of our apples are here. These are all of the June 15th ones. I had one other one I actually planted this morning. That's like a Honeycrisp seed, I think. And then our eight pink ladies. Um, our June 9th baby still has no leaves, but it is growing. I have checked on it. Our... Medjool date is getting a pretty long taproot, but it still hasn't grown leaves yet, obviously. I also have these, and I actually do not know if I have shown these on camera. And what these are are little lychee pits, or lychee nuts as they are known, uh, that I, my mother and I bought just to see what they taste like. And I put them in water just to see what would happen, and they actually started to sprout. So I have two of those here, and they're doing pretty well. They're along the same uh, growth level as the medjool date. 
They have a long taproot, but no leaves yet. This one, though, is starting to split in half, so I do think it is going to get a leaf soon. Our childhood strawberries are doing pretty well. I've been steadily cutting off these big, old, sad leaves as they grow in their new leaves. So this one is doing pretty well, but I will cut it off soon. And this one has not grown any new baby leaves, but hopefully it will. The second garden is not doing amazing, um, partly because I don't baby this one as much as the other one, and partly because it just doesn't get as hot or as wet over here as the first garden. Some of the plants are actually doing pretty well, like this luxury pumpkin pie pumpkin is doing pretty good. It's getting its buds. These um, Burgess squash, oh, actually that's a spaghetti squash, and that one's doing pretty dang well. It wasn't like this last time I checked. So spaghetti squash is doing good. The Burgess buttercups are actually doing really well. They do look small, but that's because I planted them way later, if you remember, and that's a pretty big size for the age they are. This plant has some mutant strawberries, so when these grow in, I actually kind of want to save the seeds from them and see if it's a genetic thing that's making them like that or just mispollination. Because if it's a genetic thing, I think it would be kind of fun to just have a bunch of strawberries with mutant, mutant babies on them. <laughs> I also came over here to check up on the wild strawberries I, plant, I transplanted, and this was cracking me up. So I did not put these here. These are wild, like these are other wild strawberries that are still growing on the ground, sending out runners into my pot. So, so now I have even more strawberries growing in my pot because these runners are just like invading the pot. And after all that, our paint is dry enough to peel the tape off. And there we have it. Some of it needs to dry some more, and um. The inside needs a second coat, and I need to put some other decorations on it, but all of that will be on the website. I just came to check the greenhouse, and there's a little hummingbird stuck in here, so let's try and scooch him out. Yeah, little hummingbird. Oop. Oop. I know, I will free you in a minute. I just don't want to grab your little wings. <laughs> I will put you by the hummingbird feeder and you can have food after probably being in there all night. Oh, and now that you're close, ruby-throated hummingbird. I was going to say I don't know what variety we have because I can never get a good enough look at him. I will name him Bean. Anyway, it is July 15th and it looks like it might actually rain, um, which I was not expecting. I wasn't expecting rain for the rest of the year because of how much it rained at the beginning of the year. Um, let me close this greenhouse as well. I normally close it at night. I must have forgot last night. So I am gonna try and hang up the gutter there because I want a gutter going along the, the greenhouse and into this little bucket here. Actually, because this one collects a lot of water all by itself, I might make the gutter go from here down to here instead and set a second bucket there because this one collects a lot of water and there's our lovely gutter it was actually a lot easier to put up than I expected so I'll be moving that straw that's piled right there and putting it somewhere else so that I can put a bucket there so that with the, this spot which drips into there and that spot combined it should collect a lot I actually do have another little tiny piece of gutter. I'll just put it here, might as well. The gutters are actually done now, so hopefully they'll actually pour into the buckets. There's a pretty small margin of error. Um, and uh, I keep forgetting, so I picked all of the arugula except for a couple stalks I wanted to get seeds from. So I need to plant a new lettuce here, so I'm going to go back to my house and go see what I have. I went ahead and planted this one because it says it's uh, cold resistant. Um, and so hopefully that starts growing soon, it's just in here. 
I put them in little divots, but I'm not actually going to bury them because then they'll never sprout. I bought this photo album and it's what I've been storing. My seed packet's in. Babu! <laughs> You're fine! <laughs> so I can have all of the stuff I need to know. What you doing? The only problem with it is I don't know which one, like, there's no way to figure out which side is the front and which is the back. We're still waiting for the rain. I just got back from editing a video from like a week and a half ago. Uh, so technically last week's video, because I didn't film much between the weeks. Um, but it wasn't as long as I thought. I think what happened is since I started filming on one camera and then we switched to the new camera halfway through the video, I think um, since the SD card wasn't properly formatted to the new camera, it didn't actually properly save those clips. Because I do know for a fact that this camera does work just fine on my SD card. We've done it before. Um, but, so, last week's video is half the length it should be because a lot of the clips did not make it into the video because they weren't properly saved or something. They were corrupted and not transferring and I think it's because of the switch to, to the new camera. Look at that spaghetti squash go. It's already like... A foot and a half long. It was like this long a week ago when I trimmed it. Now if only my other squash were that prolific. They're, they're okay. They're just not giant. This one is. I don't know what this is. This is the Dickinson pumpkin. You're almost in need of a trim. You're starting to overshadow the other guys. We've got these little wild onions um, growing everywhere and I kind of want to save the seeds from them so I've been keeping an eye on them all to make sure I know when they go to seed so that I can save the seeds and plant them in a bed next year. How are you, Dufus? What you doing? What you doing? <laughs> so I haven't really talked about this squash yet. This is the Gelbert Englisher scallop squash, but one of them is growing and it's already like a weird little flat scallop shaped. I saw it and I was like, what the heck is that? It's the Gilbert Englisher. I thought it was another cucumber and I was like, why does it look so weird? And these little cucumbers are growing well, as are our little zucchinis. It barely takes a day for them to be pollinated because I thought those flowers shriveled up because of the heat, but... I think that's just because they po got pollinated so quickly. I'm gonna sit down and weed slash thin out these carrots here. I've done this whole row and my back hurts, <laughs> but I do want to get these guys done as well. We've got an actual pea pod now. Two little pea pods. They look green though, not white, so maybe they're a hybrid. <laughs> Snow peas are green. Oh, I thought they were white. No. Okay. They looked white. The ones that I got looked white, like the dried ones. Oh. Good afternoon. It's not even good afternoon anymore, it's good evening, because it is like 6 o'clock. I took a nap and I slept for like 4 hours, I think because it was so hot, but I don't know. That happens sometimes, it's very confusing. <laughs> but. Um, pretty much what happens after I wake up from my nap and it cools off is I spend the next three hours in the garden watering and I don't usually show much of that. But I kind of go through and I just check the soil around all the plants or um, if there's any that I really can't remember the last time I watered them. I will just go through and water all of those. And I'll do any pruning I need to, I'll do any thinning I need to, um, and it takes a while. It didn't rain last night, so the rain barrel is still about a foot from the top. It still has a ton of water in it, but that feels like we're running out because I'm so used to having it so full constantly and just refilled every single time. 
it gets any lower. The first potatoes we planted are starting to die. Um, I don't know if it's an illness that's killing them or if it is just the end of their season since we planted these ones so early. Um, but if they do, it does end up dying all the way. I will just dig up the potatoes that are in there. This potato has a grasshopper on it and a spider living in it. The poppies are pretty big, but still no signs of flower buds. This looks like if a daisy were drawn by a five-year-old. Once I go from the first garden, I come down to the second garden and usually I have to bring a gallon of water with me because there's not really a lot over here. The black coat runner bean has its first flowers. So we heard a rumor that there are huckleberries growing, which didn't make any sense because we went and checked on them like a week ago and they were like this small and completely green. But we went today and somehow they have freakishly become ripe in less than a week. Hi, Lily Bear. You just bonked my camera. Um, we didn't stay for long, maybe 25 minutes, half an hour, just to get a couple. And they're not completely, completely ripe. They're still a little bit pink. But I was originally going to be going back to town this week because this week is pretty much the last week I can leave the garden. Like, after this is when everything is going to start growing and everything's going to need maintenance. Um, and so this was supposed to be the slow week where I had nothing going on with the garden or my plants. And I could go back to town. But now I have to stay and pick huckleberries for a week. Um, potentially the next three weeks. So I am very excited about that. Even though it means I can't go to the town until the end of the season. Most likely we might find time for that. Um, right now mom is going to make some huckleberry pancakes. So that'll be fun.